There is a view that in recent years the Nigerian nation has witnessed a disconnect with its sense of history and identity as well, with calls for a self-determination, restructuring and disintegration becoming popular across the country. Some scholars and literary icons have called for a, a national soul-searching regarding Nigeria's historical perspectives. Now, out of the nation's estimated 250 ethnic nationalities, the Ibibio nation has been among the most vibrant and deep-seated in a collective effort at preserving its culture, tradition and nuances. And of course, joining us to discuss this is Otobong Uwa, a writer and media personality. It's good to have you with us. Thank you very much. All right, Otobong. Um, in your, one of your write-up, you said that Ibibio nation was considered the fourth uh, largest ethnic group in Nigeria for some time. So how would you describe the journey so far? And is Ibibio nation still in reckoning in Nigeria's current socio-political standing? Okay, thank you very much. Um, straight up, I would say yes, uh, we are still uh, relevant in the reckonings, the political reckonings. Um, it's always somewhat controversial when you try to to speak about the the ranking mm -hmm. in terms of population. So, growing up, we were told Efik Bibio as um, a composite unit was the fourth largest ethnic group, but um, of recent, we've had. Um, Differentiation between the BBS and FX, who had the jaws, and so it's um, it's a topic uh, that is um, is to be left to the population experts, mm. but uh, we we'll stay on the interest of the BBS and um, their contributions to nation building. Yeah. So, can you tell us about the timing of this book and why it's important? You know, to help the rest of the country understand the BBS story, like you said, in the context of socio-cultural, political, and the economic setting of Nigeria? Okay, so um, first of all, we've contributed a lot to, to, to the country. And for the timing, um, unfortunately, we were in a political era, so some people may try to misplace it, uh, <laughs> but it's actually um, more of a reawakening, a cultural reawakening. You know, uh, we've lost a lot of our senses of history as, as a people. Um, history is no more taught in most schools. Uh, I think in some private schools they still teach um, history as a subject. Um, then for the Bibio, uh, particularly, a lot of literature has been very old. The literature that we've had has been very old, um, but correct though. Mm. So w what I've attempted to do at this point is just to update the literature. I've also, uh, I, I try to do a lot of research in that direction and just to bring a new face to the Bibio conversation, to, to speak to the world, to tell the world that we are here, uh, we are a people, I mean, Aquabom is over six million people and the Bibios constitute um, far greater percentage of that. But we are, we, are, we are a wonderful set of people, we are definitely contributors to nation building. Yeah. And it's still on the discussion of Nigeria's dwindling sense of history and identity. So how is that scenario affecting our sense of unity uh, when it comes to nationhood and the need to live in harmony with over 250 ethnic groups uh, that comprises uh, the whole of Nigeria? Thank you very much. Uh, that's a question I've been answering I mean, for the past uh, three weeks. And writing about the Bibi wasn't trying to like uh, create more divisions uh, within us as a people, but it was just to isolate um, the ethnic group and propagate it um, positively. And like I've said, I've, I've encouraged uh, others to also write and read about their ethnic groups. So within the context of the conversations around nation building, the knowledge of your history, first of all, will make you know, number one, that we're all migrants. Everybody Indeed. migrated. All, all walks of history always talk about um, different versions of migration. So we're all migrants. And there is no um, absolute homogeneous ethnic group in Nigeria, none. So we have a heterogeneous mix, uh, but of course you have a, a larger constituent unit in the heterogeneous mix. So once you understand all these um, leanings of reality, you are, you are going to be in a better state to understand that we're all one and we can cohabit together as one. Well. And with the happenings in the country, um, the more we know about ourselves, um, the more we appreciate ourselves, and the more we respect the views of the other person. I know, like, um, I'll give an example. Um, the Yoruba culture, you know, Dobale, you know, 
I can tell you that maybe eighty percent of people in our people have not seen the Yoruba man physically. The Yoruba person doubly prostrate. So, you know, you could read in books, you could see it in movies. So it was a culture shock the first time I saw it. But it's something I encourage the Yoruba, and it's beautiful. You know, so um, once you understand how um, others treat um, cultural issues, you are more likely to respect their culture and their the behavioral preferences. Speaking of culture, um, I'd like you to touch on cultural rebirth. I understand that was a theme when you and some thought leaders gathered yeah. in Uyo, the Akwaibom state capital recently. Could you shed more light on that? Since you said it would help the nation to capitalize on its competitive advantage. Yeah, I mean, it's just a follow-up to the last question. I mean, we need a renaissance. We absolutely need a renaissance. We need to appreciate our culture. Uh, unfortunately, we also have a young population that has been so westernized. And uh, we need to call everybody back. We need to step back. We put a marker and call everybody back. Come back home. Home is um, figurative. Come back home, understand your culture, appreciate your culture, and expand your culture. I'll give an, uh, I speak in analogy. I'll give an example. You know, like the Spanish people, people in Houston, people in Texas, they learn Spanish. And Spanish, because those people absolutely try to maintain their their identity. The Mexicans, Indians, I mean, the accent is still going to be very Indianish. I mean, yeah. excuse me, my use of <laughs> my coinage, you know. So it's it's there needs to be a consciousness. It needs to be an a reawakening, an appreciation of our identity. And I, I, and we have a very 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 beautiful country with. Over 250 ethnic groups, yeah. diverse cultures, and widely traveled within the country. And each um, place I visit, I just see beauty in the country, beauty in the culture, beauty in the food, beauty in the practices. The, the marriage practices in the Yoruba land is different from Igbo land, from TV, you know. So there's just so much we can gain from us. And economically, it's, it's, it's going to be a tourism booster. It's going to be a tourism booster. I mean, um, we hope uh, as a group to go into promoting and propagating yeah. the the top potential, the tourism potentials in Ibibio um, heritage, and I hope it expands to the greater Nigerian context. Okay, still talking about your region, how would you describe Ibibio's nation's uh, relationship uh, with immediate neighbors like the Efe, Karos, and of course the Igbo in Nigeria currently? Today, uh, we have uh, peaceful neighbors, and we live in peace with our neighbors, okay? But uh, we have a lot of uh, ethnographic relationships. That's exactly what I was uh, trying to <laughs> So, <laughs> so um, <laughs> In terms um, of geographical demarcations and yeah. uh, boundary limits and stuff like that. Okay, so I will try to create a map uh, okay. in my head, okay? So to the... To the Northeast of Akwaibom is yeah. the Aro. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, the history tells us that we moved from, uh, we are semi-bound to, uh, we moved from the from the Congo region to southern Cameroon, a place called Sagadet. And from there, we migrated to Aro Chuku and we spent like two centuries there. There was a war, then we migrated. So we have that um, con contiguous relationship mm -hmm. based on um, boundary. Then, the north to the northwest, uh, we, we have a contiguous relationship with the Igbos. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, Abia State, the Nguas, I mean, they are clearly yeah. our neighbors. Then down south, uh, we have a relationship with the Efix. And, you know, the Efix and the Bibio were one and the same people for a long while. And I'll still say to some sort, yeah, we can still say they're one of the same people. Well, um, clearly you were very invested in the book that you wrote. It took six years, You, from what we understand. You yes. consulted 150 books and 80 academic works. Over. But, uh, Over. Yeah. <laughs> Over. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> so I would like to ask, um, I mean, I've seen what stands out in the book in terms of um, you have a comprehensive marriage list of an Ibibio person, what it should be. Why, did, why is that what you chose in wow. terms of okay. <laughs> significance? So, very, very interesting topic. It's, it's, um, I, I, I did do a lot of historiographical research. So in none of the books or journals did I see that, uh, that controversial topic. Controversial in the sense that um, people tend to misrepresent um, 
our practices, okay? To, to marry an Ibibio lady is, um, I don't want to you say it's expensive, but it's, it's something that is not cheap. Mm. So you need to plan for it, it's an investment. So what I tried to do was to move across the state, get a lot of um, lists for marriages, and try to average them out and come up with something. It's not foolproof because, uh, I mean, the practice we have is for families to have a list, families and larger families in Ibo and the so our own is called uh, Epuk. So for the larger families to have a list signed up by the family head and the list could stay for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So when you want to get married, you bring out the list. So you have those variations in in towns and villages and families but largely what we have there is a fair representation of what should be um, so in case you have someone that is it's planning to get married to a beautiful a bibio lady <laughs> they need to read your book right yeah, yeah, and where please. can we get the book by the way okay so um in lagos currently it's um so it's it's um it's on paystack there's a paystack list um, link which i will share there's a paystack link it will be at the airport and at some bookshop. So we are having discussions with some bookshop. But in Aquaibom, it's it's at the airport. It's at um, Ibom Tropicana. It's at any stores. It's uh, at Do Bookshop. Um, so we have some outlets. All right. Yeah. Okay. On that to, on that note, uh, Otto Bong Gua, author of Ibibio Nation: History and Culture. It's good to have you with us. Many thank thanks you for your perspective on those issues. Good to have you. Thank you.